Hi, I'm Hilke, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. In this video, I will discuss two filter devices, being the blur and the expander device, which, for example, can be used to smooth out edges or increase the edge distance. We begin by taking a look at the blur device. Note that the blur device has a mixed input and mixed output type, meaning it can be hooked up to both a height field and a bitmap. The blur device, as its name suggests, blurs its input, giving for a smoother output. This effect on its own can be useful, but the device is often used for smoothing the edges of a mask or to smooth the input of a selector device, preventing grainy selections and averaging out extreme values. When opening the properties, we see five parameters. The blur method determines what algorithm is used for blurring. By default, blurring is set to approximate which is a really fast blur algorithm, at the cost of precision and artifacts. Precise on the other hand, has little to no artifacts, but at the cost of a lot more time to calculate, especially when blurs become larger. To illustrate that, here are the results of some testing I did, at the resolution of 2048 pixels. Note that the scale of the graph is logarithmic, and the apparently linear increase of the precise method's time to compute is actually increasing exponentially, which is something you do not want, even on a machine with plenty of CPU power. When looking at the time to compute for different resolutions, going from 256 all the way up to 4096, we again see an exponential growth for the precise method, but also for the approximate method, indicating it will take some time when using high resolutions. However, as we can derive from the previous result, the radius is not influencing the compute time that much, leading to the conclusion that, at high resolutions and large radii, the approximate method should be chosen over the precise method. One important note is that the approximate method becomes less precise at higher radii. If you are planning on doing a selection that requires accurate values, you should not be using the approximate method, but the precise method instead. Here, an example of a convexity selection on a blur using both methods and you can clearly see the artifacts the approximate blur is causing. The last method, directional, can be used to create directional blurs, which gives a windswept look to your terrain. The direction parameter now also becomes available, allowing us to control the direction of the blur. The specify radius in method determines how the blur's radius should be calculated. The world scale option will always blur a set distance and therefore the amount of blurring will increase if the extent becomes smaller, and decrease if the extent becomes larger. When set to pixels, the amount of blurring is scale independent instead, as it will always blur a set number of pixels. The radius determines how much pixels will be averaged and blurred together. A low value will retain much detail, whereas a large value will quickly become a smooth, unnatural looking shape. The isolate masked areas parameter will, when checked, ensure the blur is only applied to the masked areas and therefore does not take the pixels outside of those areas into account when blurring, creating for a better transition area. And that's the blur device. It is a useful device for removing sharp or noise features from your terrain, averaging your terrain's features before performing a selection on it and, by supplying a fast and precise method, it will most of the times fulfill your needs. Next up is the expander device. The expander device kind of works like the blur device, but instead of smoothing out the values, it retains the value of the pixel and spreads it out, making it an excellent tool for making small features more pronounced, but also carving out slopes. Let's open the properties. The first property is action, and it determines what kind of action the expander device performs. It is an enumeration of the following options. Expand, shrink, open and close. Behind the expand and shrink actions you see respectively max and min between parentheses, which may ring a bell when you think of the combiner device's methods. Here they indicate something similar. As you expand a pixel's value, the larger pixels will now overlap. World Machine can only display one value per pixel, so it must choose what value to show. When set to expand, the highest value is chosen, reminiscent to the combiner's max method resulting in the pixels with the highest elevation growing outwards. When set to shrink, the lowest value is chosen, reminiscent to the combiner's min method. 
resulting in the pixels with the highest elevation growing inwards and therefore losing height. The open and close actions blend the expand and shrink methods, where open favors expand and close favors shrink. The filter types are best explained when we hook up some terrain. So let me grab a basic noise, decrease the feature skill a bit, and go through them. The default is Gaussian, where the pixels are expanded following the Gaussian distribution, creating for a swollen and lumpy terrain when expanding, and a hollow and crater-like terrain when shrinking. The linear slope creates slopes, as if each pixel becomes a diamond shape from the radial grid. A useful application is to use this in combination with the shrink action to create valleys. The last filter type, square, expands the pixels in a square-like fashion, and, when set to shrink, creates the crater-like terrain we know from the Gaussian type, but with straight lines, giving an alien look to your terrain. The specified distance in parameter is the same as for the blur device. World scale depends on the size of your extent, whereas pixels is scale independent. The distance parameter is the same as the radius parameter, determining how far the pixel should be expanded. The higher the distance, the more time it will take to compute. Just as with the blur device's precision method, the expander device's compute time increases exponentially the higher the distance value becomes. There's no real difference between the filter types, and, when increasing the resolution, the increase in compute time is even bigger. This is something to keep in mind, as expander devices are notorious for being slow. That's why the blur and the expander device do essential devices for your terrain, but use with caution as both can take up a lot of time to compute if not used wisely. See ya!